Comparative anatomy. That's the study of similarities between different kinds of animals. Another word that we use is homology. Okay, what is homology? Homology refers to the similarity or the correspondence between different parts of an animal. For example, the arm of a man, the foreleg of a dog, the wing of a bird, or the fin of a fish, they like to correspond the similarity. And of course, if you compare the foreleg of a dog, there is a thing there that's to some degree like an elbow. The joint here of a bird, some degree like an elbow. I don't really see how they get the connection between the, the fin of a fish, but what they try to say is that because there's a similarity, that perhaps one evolved into another or they came from common ancestors. And evolutionists like to point out these similarities as evidence for one species evolving into another. They especially like to point out the similarities between men and apes. And it is true, there are similarities between men and apes. But to stress similarities without emphasizing the differences is not objective scientifically. What similarities are there between the ape or chimpanzee and the man? What, what other similarities? Five fingers in each hand? What else? We both have two eyes, two ears, one mouth. Two nostrils. There, there are some. Okay, so there's no doubt. And if you looked inside of us, we both have a heart. We both have blood. So there are probably some, you know, intestines. There are some similarities. But to only emphasize the similarities and to say that, that I'm his closest cousin, <laughs> uh, you know, what they'll try to do, well, that's stretching. They only emphasize the similarities. What I want to show you is there's some huge differences. Let's talk about some of the differences. What are some differences? But let's show you how man is different from animals, and especially man is different from, <coughs> quote, the closest cousin. Permanent bipedal locomotion. In other words, man is the only mammal who walks permanently on two feet. It's true an ape can for a little while, chimpanzee can for a little while, but they get scared and they run, they resort to all four. How about the nose? If we would turn sideways, Michael has a prominent bridge on his nose. You do too. What about an ape? They really, an ape or chimpanzee really just sort of has a face with holes in it, doesn't it? There are actually some 200 differences, and I'm just going to give you a few, that are very easy to point out to people. Let's give you another one. Very easy. Chin. Feel your chin. You've got a chin. Look at this guy here. He really has no chin. They don't have a chin bone. And of course, this is important in our speech. So the lower lip and jaw, the bottom of an ape's face, they have practically an absence of a chin. We have what's called lumbar curve, forward convexity of the spine. The ape's spine does not curve in the back like a human spine. If anything, it curves the other way. Now here's another really easy, all you gotta do is take off your shoes. Human toes point the same way. An ape, if you notice on their foot, their toe is opposable. It's like a thumb. Our body is relatively hairless. I mean, I know there's a difference between Jacob and Esau. You know, Esau had a lot of hair and Jacob was a smooth fellow. But still, compared to ape, there's some huge differences. Some called us naked apes compared to a chimpanzee or orangutan or, or what have you, we are definitely quite hairless. Here is a huge difference. You can't maybe see it by looking at it, but you certainly can see it by observing. The gap between the best trained chimpanzee, and by the way, have you ever been to a chimpanzee show? 
I like to go. I mean, I don't go to see my ancestors, but I like to see the things that they've trained to do. You know, they can ride motorcycles. Like St. Louis Zoo used to have a tremendous chimpanzee show. But the best trained chimpanzee, some of which have been trained some form of sign language, and the average human being is an immense difference. No animal can come close to the reasoning power of a human. The English language alone has over a million words. How many words do you think an animal could speak? You know, they may go bow wow or meow or something like that, but they can imitate some sounds. They sure can, but they can't, they don't really know what they're saying. They're just imitating. They don't have a reasoning power, they don't have a grammar, nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, and so forth, and they can't reason at all close to humans. And where the animals have a head at the end of a spinal column, ours is at the top. Ours is balanced at the top of the spinal column. Here's another thing that's quite different, and that is a very long period of what we call postnatal growth. In other words, after the birth, there's a long period of growth. Some humans even grow into their 20s. I would say most of you probably quit growing vertically when you were about 16. But there's some people continue to grow into their 20s. Other people probably quit 13, 14. But on the average, like 16, probably 17 years, I'm guessing would be a, a decent average. On the other hand, animals reach maturity in a very short time. I'm sure that probably the most common animals here are probably dogs and cats. How old does a dog have to be to have puppies? Around a year or so, right? Close to that. And of course the human, well there have been some cases where humans very young, you know, like 11 and so forth, but in general it's certainly a lot longer for maturity. So the Olympics are won by people who are what age? Most of the Olympians are in their 20s, some in their 30s. Very few teenagers win the Olympics. But how about the Kentucky Derby? Who wins the Kentucky Derby? Horses in their 20s? Three-year-olds, right? So three-year-olds win the Kentucky Derby. Can you imagine a three-year-old in the Olympics competing? Can't stand a chance. They'd just sort of toddle out there. If they even knew where the finish line would be, it would be pretty good or could, could finish. So can you see the huge difference between animals? Maybe the reason we have such a long postnatal growth is because we have so much to learn before we become adults. The sad thing about it is lots of times people mature physically long before they mature mentally. That's why I'm not recommending young teenagers get married. The highest total number of vertebrae. You know, anybody know how many vertebrae you've got now? Well, a child has 33 vertebrae. An adult has 26. It's because some of these things unite. And here's another difference. The thumb. You have the longest thumb in proportional to the length of the hand. Even on a biochemical basis, there is a difference. There's a different number of chromosomes in the human than a lot of animals. For example, a cat has 36 chromosomes. I haven't accounted this, I've just done some research. A mouse and a pig happens to have 40. A rat, 42. A human, 46. So you think, well, wow, here's the evolutionary chain. we got more chromosomes. But a sheep has 54. Is a sheep better than a human? What did Jesus say? Are you not better than the sheep? So you were created to have dominion over the animal. Cattle has 60. Aren't you better than the cows? Horse, 66. So the chromosome pattern does not show at all a evolutionary pattern. So there are a huge number of differences. I mentioned here the one anatomy. The says 312 characteristics that are found only in man. And of course the question, if evolution was true, if we have evolved from other creatures, where are the transitional forms? Most of the things that they have proposed as transitional forms have been hoaxes. We will show that later. 
How is man mentally? We've already talked about physically. You've, you should be able to write eight or ten physical differences if you can just remember them just by looking at things, rather than hairless, toes, spine, so forth. Man's upward look, his ability to have facial expressions and feelings, and his tongue for speech makes him ideal for fellowship with his creator. I mentioned this earlier a couple of days ago, when God formed man, man became a living soul, different from the animals. Animals have life, animals have flesh, but we have a portion that's going to live forever. I want to live with him. So man was created. Genesis 1, 28 says that man was created to have dominion over everything. It isn't a case that just man's dominion evolved. He was created to have dominion. Jesus made it clear that man is better than sheep, also better than the fowls of the air. Man was created to rule rather than to evolve that way. So man has a moral and intellectual nature that far exceeds any of the animals.